When it comes to taking advice from people, whether it be people you know in your life, maybe it's a professor, maybe it's a family member, or maybe it's someone on the internet. It could be a Reddit post, it could be a YouTube video. It doesn't matter where that advice comes from, you have to think for yourself. So let me just start by saying that. And I'm not saying that all the advice you get for certain things is bad, but there is a lot of bad advice. And I can think of specific situations and very specific things that I was trying to do or trying to learn where there was an individual maybe on some YouTube channel or some internet forum or a Reddit post. And I read their comment and I thought, wow, Maybe I shouldn't do that this way, or maybe I shouldn't try to learn this that way. And they were wrong. You know, looking back, they were wrong. At the same time, there's lots of good advice out there. And sometimes it's right in front of your face. And so if there's all of this great advice out there that's right in front of your face, why aren't people just taking it and using it to better themselves, right? If, if good advice is freely available on the internet, if you can actually use critical thinking and be able to identify between good advice and bad advice and actually find the good advice, let's say you can magically do that. You can say, this is good advice and this is bad advice. And you can find that good advice. Then why isn't everyone taking it and turning their lives around and becoming better? learning better, getting a better job, having better relationships. It's because it's easy to say, but it's hard to do, right? It's easy to say, work harder. It's easy to say, study more, but those things are hard to do. Those things are hard to do. So in this video, I'm going to give you some advice, some real mathematics advice. And I'm just going to come out and say it. It's easy to say, but it's hard to do. So let's start with basic advice. This, this advice applies to anyone trying to learn math. You can be any age, you can be in any school, or you can be in no school. Simple advice that's easy to say, but hard to do. Well, it's actually easy to do the first few times. And that advice is do math every day. Every day, sit down with the book. I prefer old books like this one. It's just an old random college algebra book. It smells so good. Sit down and tell yourself you're going to do one problem. If you can do at least one problem every day, you're going to get better. It's like when you start a new physical activity. If you can do a little bit every day, you're going to get better. Same thing with math, right? Just a little bit every day. How much? That's where it becomes complicated. People try to develop routines like, oh, if I do, you know, 60 minutes a day of this topic, 60 minutes a day of this topic, over a course of six months, I'll cover this entire book. And that's fun. Planning is fun, but you can over plan. I think most of us, most of you who are watching this video are very intelligent people. This is a mathematics channel. I feel like my audience is very, very well educated. And as educated people, as people who think a lot, math requires a lot of thinking, we tend to overthink. And sometimes I think that's bad, right? You just have to do it. So I think if you, if you just sit down and do one problem every day, at least one problem, that's, that's good advice. Easy to say, hard to do. Now it's easy to do the first few times. The hard part is the discipline. The hard part is doing it when you don't want to do it. And that's, that's what takes effort. That's what takes practice. And that's where you really have to like, have a reason for learning math. You really have to want it. And that's what's going to carry you through those days where you don't want to study. So what else is real math advice? Well, if you're in college or in high school, go to class, right? This is one that I didn't follow. I didn't do this. I didn't finish high school. I dropped out. 
so I could play basketball with my friends. That was the actual reason. I had a pretty good high school experience, actually. I had good friends, and but I'd rather play video games and uh, play basketball with my friends. So I quit, and I got a GED. You know, I went to college later. And then when I went to college, you know, I was really motivated because I started late. But even though I knew it was better to go to class, there would be days that I would skip. You know, I, I would skip class to study for a test in another class. That's, that's one I get all the time. And honestly, in, in some of these math classes, you know, if you're taking an advanced math class like topology, this is an advanced undergraduate class, you really don't want to skip class. You know, that, that lecture is critical. You can try to read the book, but we all know how hard reading math books is. I'm always promoting books and saying it's good to read, but it's hard, right? It's hard to learn from a book. Easy to say, hard to do. So, so go to class, even when you're just not feeling like you should. You know, if, if, you're, if you're just like, oh, I can't concentrate today. Oh, the teacher sucks. You know, I don't understand every, everything. So what if the teacher sucks, right? I mean, you're going to get teachers that aren't good. That's just the way it is. Because teachers are people. Some people are better at certain things than other people. It's not because they're bad people. It's just some people aren't very good at explaining certain topics. It's just how we are. It's just the way it is. So go to class. That's real math advice. That's something you should definitely do. What else is real math advice? Study, right? Study for tests, obviously. You know, go over your notes, do all of the homework. So take all the resources that are actually given to you in a particular class and use them. So that includes homework and notes, right? And, and videos, if you have any videos, watch them. But usually it's homework and notes. When you write down notes from, from your classroom lectures, write everything down. There's a big debate here. Some people say they are visual learners and they'll sit back and not write anything down. But I feel like that ends at a certain level. Although in grad school, I, do, I did know this guy. He wasn't my friend, but I, I would see him. And he would sit in the back like this and just like never write anything down. And he did pretty well, but I have a feeling he already knew the material. So most people write everything down. Then you go home and then you rewrite your notes. You digest them. If you have any questions on your notes, you go to your professor's office hours. You talk to him. Hey, hey. I'm a little unclear about this. I know you explained it in class. Can you, can you just explain it again, please? This is really good. You know, just get involved. Go see the professor. Analyze those notes. Notes are key. Notes are key. Not only does it help you, it helps your professor, especially if, if you're going to them and talking to them about their notes because it tells them, hey, next time I teach this class, I can, I can, I can explain it a different way or I can make this revision in my notes or, oh, that's interesting. This person had a question about how I presented, you know, topic X, Y, Z. Maybe I should present it in a different way or maybe I should give a different example next time. So not only is it helping you, it's helping someone else. It's helping your teacher. So notes, notes are critical. Teachers only have so many hours to teach. Every minute counts and they know that. And so everything they teach you in class, typically if they're decent human beings, is because it matters, right? It's because it's gonna be on your test. It's because it's gonna be in the homework. You know, they know what you need to know. And they're presenting that in their limited amount of time. So notes are critical, right? Go over your notes. Then obviously homework. I think notes are more important, but homework is also important. A lot of times, you know, teachers will assign specific homework problems on purpose. And a lot of times they throw in hard ones on purpose, which is no fun. But I was always the type that was really strategic with the homework and the notes. Everything had a purpose. Every single word I wrote on the board had a purpose. Everything has meaning. And a lot of teachers are like that. So worship your notes, worship the homework. That's good math advice. That's something you should do. So yeah, do math every day. Show up to class. Go over all of your notes, go over all of the homework. And, and, and when it comes time to the test, here's some more real math advice. The last piece of advice I'll give you, and this is the hardest one. Easy to say, hardest to do. The hardest to do. Make sure you can do everything cold. Everything, right? So. When you're studying for that test, if there's a review, just go over it like crazy. Like if they go over stuff you need to know for the test, go over it like crazy. And then make sure you can do every single homework problem, every concept from the notes, every example from the notes. Make sure you can do it cold, right? Without looking at your notes, without looking on the internet. That's easy to say, hard to do. If you can do that, you're probably gonna get an A in every single math class. You might get a B or two, maybe you'll get a C in some rare situation, but you're gonna pass, you're gonna get your degree and you're gonna, You'll, you'll, you'll get a college degree. 
Most people don't do that though because it's hard to do, right? Easy to say, hard to do. It takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of time. And a lot of people, a lot of you might be watching this video, you might be saying, well, I don't have the time to do that. I'm sorry, right? That, I, I, there's nothing you can say to that, right? Because everything is about time, right? Everything in our life takes time, you know, going to work, relationships, studying, it all takes time. And it's really how we manage that time that is key. So when you sit down to study, study, right? Put the phone away, put the computer away. You need focus study time, right? You need hyper focus, get your mind into it. And that's, that's a whole nother video, you know, how to focus, how to study. That, that's a whole nother, <laughs> I could talk about that for 20 minutes. I should make that video and I will, I promise. Because time management is important, especially when you're trying to learn something like, like mathematics. Hopefully this has helped you. Do you have any real math advice for people watching this channel? People from all over the world watch this channel. At different ages, they're at different places in life, they're learning different types of math or, or other subjects. So every time you leave a comment that helps other people, that's good, right? You're helping other people. Also, if you want to learn math, I do have courses. Check them out. They're on the Udemy website, but if you go through my website, um, I'm pretty sure you get the lowest price, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. But just go to mathsorcerer.com. It'll redirect you to free math vids. I've got courses on everything pretty much. Algebra, calculus, uh, trig, some advanced calculus, uh, a little bit of abstract algebra, etc. Yeah. Until next time, good luck. Take care. Keep doing mathematics.